thank you so much for tuning on into our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to introduce you to the one guy who is not only a brand strategist, but he also deploys digital footprints. He does not only do that, but he has written over 200 blog posts where he talks about brands, personality, and mental health. He's not just a self-help, but he is also helping others. Through his work, he has managed to turn his passion into purpose. Welcome to our screens, Otto Basi Basi. Thank you, thank you. Um, very happy to be here. Looking forward to our conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So, without wasting any time, we're just gonna go straight into it. All right. So, just tell us about your journey. What makes you think that you have made it? I mean, you've been in the <laughs> industry for more than eight years. Yeah. And you've done work for more than eight years. Mm -hmm. So, would you say you've made it? I don't think I've made it. Um, as far as where I want to take it, I always tell people that it's still very, very early in my journey. But um, if there's one thing I am grateful for is the fact that I have been able to do what I love mm -hmm. um, and been able to experience so much in, in that time working with so many kinds of people from corporates to startups to NGOs mm -hmm. and um, the kind of opportunities and the reaction to my work is something I enjoy. So I think in that sphere, I am successful already. Mm -hmm. Um, even though I'm planning to take this even more further than where it is now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So tell us more about like what is brand strategy? When someone says they're strategizing a brand, what yeah. are you doing? So a brand is when you hear when you hear the word brand, right? You mm -hmm. usually think about a logo. Yeah, right? definitely. But the brand is the sum total of the emotions and the energy and the mm -hmm. perception they have of your product or mm -hmm. of your of your person. So usually, because my my background, most of what I've done is design mm -hmm. and mostly graphic design, mm -hmm. identity design mostly. Um, what what the person is trying to do when they ask for a logo or for an identity is they're trying to capture the essence of what they're trying to do, okay. right? And underneath that is the idea of brand. Okay. So I started working with my clients to really dig into the essence of what the strategy strategy is. So. Mm -hmm. um, who are you really? Who are you for? Mm -hmm. um, why should they even listen to you in the mm -hmm. first place? So it's 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 giving that personality to everything about your thing, not just mm -hmm. how it looks, but also how you interact with your customers and how you mm -hmm. communicate. So that's basically what brand strategy is. The cool thing about it is that it it answers multiple questions at the same time. Okay. So if you have a strong sense of what your brand is, you would know how to market because you know what you're saying and what you're not saying. Mm -hmm. You would know how to strategize your business because you know where you're trying to go. Um, and it's very easy to now that align that to your larger sense of purpose, which is very important for fulfillment in the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, so that is why, that's basically what brand strategy is and why it's important. So you're saying that I can have a brand strategy yes. in place, yes. but not live it up. Is no, that possible? Yeah, no, certainly. I mean, there's... <laughs> A lot of times people do strategy work, mm -hmm. it's, you know, and whatever strategy it is, business, brand, and it's very easy to take that thing and just put it in the drawer and never look at, mm -hmm. look at it again. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very important to actually roll out and implement your brand and do it mm -hmm. consistently mm -hmm. because that's how, you know, you get the message into the mind of the consumer. Mm -hmm. Now imagine if Coca-Cola didn't put out ads every year or however frequently they do it mm -hmm. and you forgot about them for five years and all of a sudden you just saw off, you know, like you've got to be consistent. You've got to be in the face of your consumer, your audience the whole time. Is that your picture or your, 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 your product? Because what you guys is help the looks, right? Yeah. Um, what do we see? Yeah. But is that also important for the product itself that you'll be selling? So who is in my face? Who should I be reminded of? Coca-Cola yeah. or Coca-Cola that brings happiness into our homes? Well... You may not care about Coca-Cola itself, the mm -hmm. product, but whenever you see the, the billboard or the, the ad, it mm -hmm. would tie into an experience you've had your whole life because mm -hmm. you've seen Coca-Cola mm -hmm. your whole life. Yeah. So whether they're trying to push the idea of happiness or mm -hmm. fun or whatever it is, they're pushing it. Mm -hmm. You might not necessarily connect with the product or think mm -hmm. that it's not healthy or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's always that tension mm -hmm. and that is why your product should actually fulfill the promise that your brand mm -hmm. makes you know mm -hmm. so um I, I guess brands that do that quite well one of my favorite brands is like apple mm -hmm. you know they they espouse 
thinking differently and doing the whole computing or technology game mm-hmm. differently mm-hmm. and they have their ideals so it's always beautiful it's always easy to use mm-hmm. um and and that is what you experience when you mm-hmm. use an apple mm-hmm. product you know it, mm-hmm. it really is generally easy to use and mm-hmm. you know it, it and it works in that way mm-hmm. so it's very important to, for the product to actually deliver on the promise mm-hmm. of your brand otherwise you just like trying to advertise mm-hmm. <laughs> i guess and then to tell me what what is identity design because now we've talked about the brand yeah. so when you identify like people i mean their culture their tradition that's yeah. their identity yeah. where they come from yeah. right so i'm a startup and what does identity design because i'm only trying to find my identity yeah. when i'm starting yeah so what would that mean for my startup well say so you only get one chance to get a first exp- first impression okay um and identity design is essentially your corporate identity. Mm-hmm. It's your look and feel. It's your logo. It's the mm-hmm. colors. It's the shapes. It's mm-hmm. the style of photography. You can even go as far as the sound, the smells. You know, mm-hmm. some brands actually go that far. Yeah. KFC. To embedding, to embedding exactly <laughs> the chicken yeah. can smell. You know. Yeah. You know it. So, for a startup, it's very important. Sometimes more than others Mm -hmm. well it depends on what you bring and if you bring in something to the market where the it's important for you to look good like Mm -hmm. you bring in a luxury item into Mm -hmm. the market for instance you have to look Mm -hmm. luxury um and in today's day and age where the standard for design is already quite high because Mm -hmm. a lot of the products that we use are done to a relatively high standard of design Mm -hmm. whether it's google Mm -hmm. or it's facebook or Mm -hmm. it's twitter or um, whatever thing you use in your day-to-day life. So if you're going to be a startup and you're going to enter the market, then put your best foot forward. Like, mm-hmm. come through with something beautiful and mm-hmm. striking and let that grab their attention. And then you can start to tell them your story. Okay. Yeah. So how would I deploy that? Um, I'm a startup. I have my branded identity. Yeah. I have my brand strategy. Everything is in place. But yeah. how would I deploy that? Because I've recently found out that in order for a brand to grow on facebook you actually need to pay ads yeah you know so people think no people will follow me you know people understand my brand but it comes with money yeah and i am starting out yeah. you know so i'm gonna have to pay like 140 for a post yeah to reach people how yeah. do i deploy that into the digital space especially well i would say you have to be very especially if you're starting up you have to be very smart about the way you're doing it and you have to make sure that every action you take counts Mm -hmm. so definitely if you want to do well on you know facebook and insta Mm -hmm. you know do invest in paid ads but Mm -hmm. supposing you really can't invest in paid ads word of mouth is very very powerful referrals are still very powerful Mm -hmm. one-on-one emailing is still very powerful Mm -hmm. so it can be as simple as putting together a list of as many people as you can who would Mm -hmm. be interested in your product Mm -hmm. and then reaching them reaching out to them telling them to reach out to more people Mm -hmm. also understanding who you're trying to reach and where they spend their time online Mm -hmm. you know what other things are they really into Mm -hmm. and then try to get their attention Mm -hmm. and how do you get their attention by providing value so it's not a matter of coming and being like yo look at me this is what i do Um, buy my products it's saying i am here to make your life better and this is how i'll make your life better Mm -hmm. and that draws people to follow your content Mm -hmm. and follow you and then eventually buy from you Mm -hmm. but it it is a lot of work Mm -hmm. getting it out there that that's marketing that sales that's getting out there Mm -hmm. and you just have to do it so if if you say it's a lot of work right it's a lot of work plus it's a lot of money yeah right yeah and what i want to understand is so how do i even know that who to reach because i i know with ads you have to be very specific yeah right like yeah. and i want people to understand my brand because yeah. that's what you do yes you try to help your customers understand the brand yeah but how do i specifically like is there time where you will say i know exactly who i'm trying to communicate to well you would know exactly who you're trying to communicate to if you're part of that target market right mm-hmm. you're just scratching your your own each okay. product wise otherwise it'll be a lot of trial and error and like there's no way to go about it but you're speaking more about something that's in the is in the marketing and sales mm-hmm. domain of things now as a brand strategist or as a brand manager mm-hmm. what i do is that once those people come into my ecosystem 
they get a unified experience, mm-hmm. you know, from, you know, the, the, the business card to the mm-hmm. website to interacting with me or buying the product. Mm-hmm. Um, so brand is more consistent. What brand helps to helps the person who's marketing mm-hmm. to actually have a story, compelling story to tell oh. when they're marketing, oh. you know. Okay. So a lot of times, you know, marketing can be either haphazard, so you're like throwing whatever onto mm-hmm. the wall and seeing what sticks. Or if you have a clear story about what you're doing, like, hey, I am Pumi, this is what I do, this is why it's important to you, mm-hmm. would you be interested? It's very easy to tell that story once you know the story. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So one of the co-founders, right, of Herbal Life, which is one of the biggest brands in the world, um, Jim Ron, mm. they say after someone has bought their product, right, two weeks, three weeks into that person, into the purchase, yeah. they call to find out if the product is working for you. Yeah. And if it's not, they, t- they ask you, what have you been doing? How many times? So they care about yeah. the after sale, yeah. right? Yeah. And obviously for you it wouldn't be the same mm. because you wouldn't call and say is it working for you have you used it but I actually do <laughs> but sometimes yeah what I want to try to is how do you do that how do you make sure that what you've done for the customer it is really working yeah. because I know a lot of brand um, strategists or people who do design mm. after that it's what you do with your own product yeah. you understand yeah. it's yeah. they don't they couldn't be bothered yeah but I feel like that's it's not how it should be, you know, as because we're trying to create a relationship. Mm-hmm. So it should mean that after you've done that for me, I need to see the results. Because yeah. you call yourself the best. Yeah. And I came to you because you said you are the best. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. So we want to know, do you do that? Do you do you care about the after sale? So I actually just started like doing that recently. Mm-hmm. Um, because usually it, it'll be a once off, like you do the yeah. project and then you go on yeah. and Godspeed to you. Um, but obviously some of my clients do come back and I do mm-hmm. have a, a close working relationship with them. So what I started doing and what I understood was that I could actually work with my clients long term. So me doing their, their, their brand or mm-hmm. rebrand is the entry point into mm-hmm. you know working yeah. with me and then that's mm-hmm. done. And then we can work for the next six months, for the next 12 mm-hmm. months. I'm really making sure that this brand gets deployed properly. Mm-hmm. So I'm doing some work with a tech company mm-hmm. and I, 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 we did their rebrand end of last year and then so far we've been working on business strategy with, um, they've got something going on with Stanford and, mm-hmm. and, and Seed Academy. Um, but I'm there and I'm with them as a brand consultant to make mm-hmm. sure that you know the things that we've decided around the brand and the things we've designed around the brand lives on and actually permeates across the whole of the company mm-hmm. you know from the culture to every touch point that mm-hmm. that their clients see mm-hmm. so yeah it's not something i've started doing and i think it's it's better because clients don't really understand design mm-hmm. all the time and i can i can design a template for for someone right yeah. and then they do something with it that just doesn't look right yeah. so also educating clients over time on best practices on how to use the things i mm-hmm. give them um so that they can maintain that standard or whatever moving forward Mm -hmm. and if there's something bigger then they can call on me or other Mm -hmm. experts to to help them Mm -hmm. talking about um best practices right so i know when i was doing my degree and there was something called user experience and user friendly right so you talked about a brand like apple and they they make sure they deliver on that but as consumers we don't really know you know, we don't really know if a website is user friendly. We think that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And their website and yeah. logos even, like can, can someone look at it for a long time? Yeah. Can someone truly identify themselves? So how do you make sure that consumers understand or can because I don't even think that people are aware of yeah. user friendly websites yeah. and user friendly products and user friendly brands, mm. you know? So how do you ensure that in your design that the design is user friendly because it's all about us at the end mm-hmm. like the consumer mm-hmm. satisfaction mm-hmm. so how do you with your client do you yeah. do it together do you do it alone or how does it work so the funny thing about human and the human brain is that humans are adaptation machines mm-hmm. right and so they may not n- know explicitly that this is not a good user experience mm-hmm. but they can feel like they they're trying to jump through hoops to trying to mm-hmm. find the information they want on your website <laughs> you know mm-hmm. um but so what, what I do with my clients now is, you know, I educate them through the process, mm-hmm. you know, especially with websites, because that's that's maybe where the usability comes into the most 
with mm-hmm. with your clients or with your audience they'll come onto your site to read about you or to get more information or whatever it is mm-hmm. and people are still making websites like it's 98 or 2004 mm-hmm. you know, we were in 2018 <laughs> like that, yeah we, we, you know a client of mine had music playing on his website and i'm like why people are irritated by yeah. that stuff they just want the information and they want to get out and just to interrupt there sorry yeah. with the information that we're getting i mean i was thinking to myself yesterday that there is so much information that we get in the day yeah i am personally tired yeah of information <laughs> exactly. information you know, overload I, every day you understand yeah. so taking that into the like how like as a brand strategist yeah. how do you guys make sure that it's it's, it's not quiet like boring you but get it's them still the right not information irritated. at the right yeah. time yeah it's it's tricky but like with websites for instance or, or with product interfaces you only want you want to give the client what they need when they need mm-hmm. it so they don't necessarily want to know your story as such mm-hmm. they don't want to know that you used to sweep the floors and then mm-hmm. you read this book and then you i mean there's a space and time for that mm-hmm. right and that's why we have content mm-hmm. but they want to know can you solve my problem mm-hmm. <laughs> you know and that's mm-hmm. really what at least the first page of the site to be mm-hmm. like listen you have a problem we have the solution mm-hmm. do one two three to get the solution here is the reasons why here's what this person said about our work and and that speaks directly to them and obviously you should be able to navigate the site on your phone mm-hmm. because we use our phones to access mm-hmm. most of the internet mm-hmm. you know um so things like that are, are the best practices to making sure that your the experience is usable and people can can go through it but isn't that um doesn't that make it like pushy like doesn't that make it like okay this person like you say i mean i've seen right now a lot of business owners or yeah. big brands telling their stories actually yeah like, everybody knows that coca-cola so- sold 12 bottles in their first year yeah you know so recently storytelling has become so important yeah. but when you go to the site you, you actually see the process of the purchase you understand? Yes, yes. so how do i how, like for, ex, for example when i buy a book online yeah i couldn't be bothered about um the story behind why i'm buying books at exclusive books mm. i want my book yeah. like what you say yeah, 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 you understand yeah, yeah. so when is the story important when is it when is it going to tie into Oh, now I understand why I love exclusive books yeah. because their delivery is on point. Yeah. Actually, their books come before the delivery that they, they give you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So when is it important? Well, it's everywhere else because it's it's all part of content. We live in a world now where you know content is very important to you know stay in mind with your consumers and 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 be relevant. So stories are just the way human beings process meaning. They will always be very vital to how we do things. And that comes into play everywhere else in the journey. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you go into the store and you want a cool drink, you just want to buy the Coke. You don't want to mm-hmm. hear that, listen, they sold 12 bottles. And you, you don't care about that. You just mm-hmm. want to buy the bottle. But while you're at home on YouTube or looking for something to entertain yourself, it might be entertaining to yeah. read the story that, wow, yeah. these guys yeah. started yeah. this big company, started yeah. so small. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you need to think about where that story will be relevant and put it there. So as an entrepreneur, you might want to share your entrepreneurial story as a way to encourage other people mm-hmm. and know that, hey, this is guy, he's doing this. And he have you back of, back of your mind. So when they need your product, they'll probably think of you first. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's just different ways to stay in mind of your consumer, but give them the contents they need when it's appropriate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So going back to the creating of the brand, yeah. the, the brand identity and the brand itself and the logos and all yeah. the graphics that come in. Yeah. Um, right now we have apps. Yes. Right, that are coming in your canvas and your wigs and how does n- that not threaten your industry as individuals because i know personally that mm. i use canva a lot yeah you know and in me using canva it means someone is not getting a deal or yeah. not getting a project yeah. you understand yeah and how is, how is that affecting you yeah. as brand designers and brand strategists and people who do logos and people who do brands and all that yeah. how is that affecting you well first of all like a lot of things are being eaten up <laughs> in the world you know yeah. it's not just designers eaten up <laughs> yeah eaten up you know um even places like law and medicine are, are getting fast you know eaten up by ai and all these new technologies so that's just a trend um, I think it's a good thing for design that these tools are more ubiquitous and available because, um, first of all, it increases design literacy, Definitely. meaning that people yeah. know what looks good mm-hmm. and 
taste levels mm -hmm. you know generally increase yeah. which make it easy or easier for the really good designers mm -hmm. to shine you know because people can yeah. identify and be like yeah. hey i know it looks good and that is really really yeah. awesome so let me let me yeah. let me work with that person at the end of the day there will still be certain things where you need a professional or someone yeah. who's steeped in the crafts to do it mm -hmm. so there's stuff you can do on canva you can quickly put together a logo mm -hmm. but you will not be able to do it to the level that i would be able to do it mm -hmm. because i do this like eight hours every mm -hmm. day you know um and at the same time the power of design is really so vast and i think we've just been scratching the surface mm -hmm. of it um, a lot of people think about design as just the artifact, meaning the object. Yeah. So it's the logo, it's the business card, it's mm -hmm. the book, it's the car. But design is also about the process. It's also about the intent. It's also about the systems. And I think designers have the opportunity to go higher up in the value chain to give value at that level. Mm -hmm. So in, in the C-suite of companies and the strategy level, we can start to solve real problems mm -hmm. and not just what shade of color should this thing mm -hmm. be. Maybe we can actually get water in places that don't have water. Maybe we can actually revolutionize the educational system to make sure that people around the world have easy access to through quality design. education through design. Mm -hmm. That is the real power of design. Um, there is a book called Glimmer by mm -hmm. Warren Berger. Um, I read, I think, back in 2012. Mm -hmm. And it really just blew up my mind about what design was and what this whole industry was. And to see what people around the world have done with design, mm -hmm. people designing wheelchairs that could climb stairs, people that <laughs> designed a laptop that could be made for under $100, you know, and that is really the power of design. That's where it, that's where it should be. So I think it's great that all these things are happening so we can move up and focus on more important things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, this guy, guys, if you want to know more about Otto, he has a website, he's on Medium, he's on Facebook, he's on Twitter, he's yeah. on Instagram, and he's also on Tumblr. But moving forward, um, now we're going to get into his personal side. So what I've realized is that don't, you don't only do brands, right? Yeah. But you also have a personal blog. Yes. And for a brand owner, a, a, a director of a company to have a personal blog, I think people think blogs are just for individuals who have something to say, mm. but they are maybe employees or, but if you are a director and you still find time to produce articles that are so liberating, I know yeah. I'm a reader of your, pro yeah. of, of your content. Yeah. Um, one of your recent blogs talked about talks about the flinch yes. you know and you mentioned that you take cold showers yeah cold showers guys so every morning <laughs> you go into the shower and you take and a cold. cold shower yeah take us to the mental impact of that what does that do to you mentally because obviously you and i know that the water is cold yeah you know it's yeah. i mean it's cold. It's not <laughs> I'm nice. gonna go out there <laughs> exactly. So what does that do for you mentally? Yeah. Okay, so I I had a cold shower this morning too and I remember thinking in there like this is still crap. Like I've been doing this for like two weeks, three weeks and it still feels like crap. Um but I had to do it. So at the moment I have no choice because I mean, like, like, you know, something happened with the, with the plumbing, with the geezer, okay. and then, you know, that oh, wasn't that's working. that's when you started. That's when I started, you okay. know. And so it was a bad, because I've also written about turning bad things into good. Okay. You know, it's like a, it's like a creative alchemy. And so I had, was faced with this bad situation, and, and I decided, you know what, let me not fix it. Let me use it. And so I'm like, okay, this other guy, Benjamin Hardy, he's also a very big writer in, in, in the space of psychology and personal development and he spoke about like the, the importance of taking cold showers and what that could do for you like health wise mm -hmm. um endorphins um, and also mentally so the impact for that is so now when i get in i don't think about it you know i don't you're already going to go through the pain of the cold shower no need to torment yourself mentally about going through the pain of the cold shower just jump in <laughs> okay. you, you know and it's crap for like the first minute 30 seconds and then you get used to it and then you take your bath and then you get up um, but there's always a sense of accomplishment there's always a sense of I just conquered something and I'm stronger for it and I'll look at people who are like oh, it's too cold I can't take I'm like oh come on just take a shower you know it's like it won't kill you so it, it does make you mentally tougher and so other things in my life where I'm like I'm tempted to shy away or flinch from a thing I'm like you could do it with a shower you can just, just jump right. in so um I want you to tell us about the process of 
writing these blogs, right? Um, you have shown something that is very, very important, yeah. especially in the entrepreneurial space, which is consistency. Yeah. You know, you are posting or you are blogging. Yeah. You are doing it. Yeah. You know, never mind you have three comments from the previous one. Mm. Never mind you have 50 comments from the yeah. previous one, but yeah. you keep on going. Yeah. That is consistency on another level. Mm. Tell us about that. Well, you know, I read a lot about success principles and stuff like that, and they always talk about consistency. And um, I, have, I have a post about trust in the process, and, and many times I've spoken about, you know, the, the, the work is yours, the results is God's, you know, so you've got to focus on your job, your job to, to, to do the work. Um, so with blogging, I've been blogging for a while, um, actually since 2010, so it's been <laughs> about eight years of blogging. Um, but I always used to blog when I was um, when I was inspired, and so that could be three times in a week or once every six months. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was very sporadic. Um, but I always knew that I wanted to make a brand out of out of you know my writing and out of my interest as a human being and personal development. And I knew that um, I wanted to move this thing forward. So I actually have a have a personal brand development workshop which I put myself through and, and so I defined and then redid my site and all that. So with blogging consistently, I decided that, you know, I wanted to blog every week. So every Monday I release something and I had to, you know, set up strategies and procedures to be able to do that. And that's what I've been doing and, and so far it's like since January it's worked out pretty fine. So every Monday I'm I'm releasing and I think it's just important. So regardless of how many people read it I'm writing you know because a big part of writing is also for me not necessarily for whoever reads it and gets value but it's a way of me keeping records it's a way of me keeping track it's a way of me being disciplined and it it also helps me I go back and I read my stuff and I'm like hey remember when you said that thing you know go ahead and do it yeah (laughs) Yeah, so um, that's a big part of why I've been able to stay consistent but it's also putting the systems in place so what I do is um, I'm, I'm, I'm writing with a theme this whole year and the theme of how to get what you want um, and in my head I'm writing to my friends you know I'm writing to the people I'm with like half of the time um, and sharing the, the principles and things that I've learned over time and how they've helped me and so I know that this is big topic whatever I'm writing is in tune with that so the first three months that was a very very foundational theme it was about the the mindset it was about the attitude it was about you know certain core foundations to know yourself know what you want um, how to make plans and and now this this next quarter is more about action related topics so the other one was the flinch which comes in when you have to take action Um, the last one was about measurement and tracking and making sure that you stay on track with your goals so that helps me and I know that I, I, I map out content topics like three, four weeks in a row. So I always know what I'm going to write about. So when the weekend rolls in, I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to write about that, put it up on Monday and then do it again next weekend. So yeah. you talk about um, when you write, right? Yes. When you write for your friends, for your family, you think about the people who are going to see the content. Yeah. So how is, how is feedback then not in, how do you move on yeah. from even not receiving feedback from the people you thought you were writing for? Because sometimes we don't get, especially yeah. when you're on media, yeah. you know, and when you are writing, when you are posting, when you are blogging, I know for sure that you don't get the response yeah. that you are expected, yeah. to, that you expected to receive, but you keep on. Yeah. So how, where do you get that? That is for me true self-esteem yeah you know yeah. that is for me knowing exactly why you're doing this because yeah. now the feed what you're doing is independent of the feedback of the feedback yeah. so how do you go on even in because it's disappointing sometimes yeah because yeah. you would write something and feel like oh and then this is dope <laughs> this is the last number article <laughs> you know but then you don't receive it. so how do you how do you come back from that and still be able to write confidently still be able to well like the things I, I couldn't not write you know, first of all, I, I, I love this. I love, I've been passionate about personal development. That's what I write about the most. I've been passionate about that since I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. You know, it's what I've always done. 
regardless of whether I was cool or not. Like I don't necessarily think it's cool, cool, but you know, it's what I love and it's what I do. I do it because I value it. And me writing about it is a way of me, you know, drilling the lessons even further into my mind. You know, if you want to learn how to do a thing, also teach, you know, it helps it go deeper. So <clears throat> I love it when people love my work. I love it when people, when you know, I get a lot of views. I love it when people interact with it. But I'm also, like I said earlier, like I'm still very, I still consider myself very early in my journey. And I look at people who are big now, and I know that they started from somewhere. I know that someone, someone like Gary V had years of doing the wine library show, you know, you know, doing the wine library show and. Only a few people like seeing that, and to now where it's got millions of subscribers. But he wouldn't be there necessarily if he hadn't had that long tail of doing the work beforehand. So um, I actually take the obscurity or the lack as as a blessing because once the light shines on you, sometimes it's not easy to stay true to your message because now you're trying to like you know pander to the numbers. But now I still have the freedom to experiment, I have the freedom to deepen the craft. So a big thing I've been doing is try to make my writing a bit better um, and try to make it a bit more engaging. So the people who do read do tell me what they like and what they didn't like. And If I liked it, I liked it. I don't care what anyone <laughs> said about it, I liked it. Um, but that is why I'm able to keep on doing it. And I, I only think I would blow up <laughs> You know, maybe like three years from now, like that's the time I'm working with. You know, like I will only really come out to the world in the way I want to probably three years from now. So all of this is is groundwork. It's leading me there, yeah. Okay. So it, my job is just to be consistent and get better. Because you never know when the break is gonna come. And it might only like three years from now someone can go and read something I wrote in 2015 and that'd be the thing that booms. <laughs> you know, I don't have control over that. I just need to keep planting the seeds. <laughs> wow, okay. uh, wow, that took me. So, um, you read a lot, yes. right? And in all the articles, you're always quoting. And yeah. I've seen that, and I know with me, with my public speaking, my coach always tells me that always quote someone. Yes. You know, it shows um, like you, you take ethic in, in what you do. Yes. You know, you take time and you do your research. Yeah. Um, and one of your quote is your favorite all time. Yeah. In, in your blog, yeah. you said all time favorite. Yes. Is by Robert Greene and yeah. nothing is frightening. Yeah. And I've read this and I read it again. Like yeah. Nothing it's is frightening. frightening. Like nothing is frightening. Yeah. Please explain that. How can nothing be frightening? Be frightening and how is how does that help you in your lifetime? It's a matter of perception. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a movie called. Um, after Earth, the one of Will Smith and Jaden. You've never seen it. So basically, it's like a post apocalyptic world. Um, people kind of don't live on Earth anymore. They live in colonies elsewhere. And then, so he's with his son, and they crash on a planet that's very, very hostile. Everything's out to kill them. Will Smith gets incapacitated in the accident, so the son has to go out and help them survive. So they call Will Smith the ghost because the creatures in this place that were attacking them, they respond to fear, they smell fear. So they call him the ghost because he could actually disappear from them because he had no fear, you know. And there was a quote he said was something like, um, danger is real, but fear is, danger is real, but fear is optional. You know, meaning that there will always be something dangerous but you do not have to be afraid. And it's all about perception. Um, so in the book, um, The 50th Law, because that's where the quote comes from, and it's a Latin phrase, nihil timendum est, it means nothing is frightening or fear nothing. And the whole book, the whole concept was the idea of fear. The fact that, you know, a lot of our programming comes from society, comes from biology, comes from the fact that we needed fear to survive, but we don't live in as dangerous a world as our ancestors did. Well, we are scared of so many things. We're scared of what people will say about us. Yeah. You know, we're scared of people judging us. We're scared mm -hmm. of embarrassment. We're scared mm -hmm. of making a mistake. Um, and all these fears become the things that that keep us trapped mm -hmm. in a limited range of actions. But if you can begin to train yourself to lose that fear or move past that fear, you know, your comfort zone expands and you can do a lot more. You know, you're able to 
pushed through into a situation where people will shrink away from mm -hmm. and succeed because you're going in without fear and you're doing everything you need to do to survive and to and to succeed mm -hmm. so that's like one of my best quotes because i used to consider myself a very fearful person yeah um I, as a child I consider myself to be a very timid and want to be perfect and want to please everyone kind of thing and knowing that I wanted to be an entrepreneur knowing I wanted to um, do things that were interesting and out of the societal norm I knew I had to cultivate that sense of fearlessness and, 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 and self-reliance to be like listen I'm, I'm, I know what I am I know what I'm trying to do and I'm just going to do that so a very important word that you use is cultivated, yes. right? There's a process. Yeah. Like you don't just cultivation itself is yeah. a process. So do you think there's ever a time where you're gonna be well, I don't care. Like, do you think like every fearless? Time, yeah, because I know. Yeah, <laughs> you understand. Yeah. Like um fearless. Do you think there's only ever gonna be a time where you go or you write or you or you design something for someone and yeah. you, do you think there's only be ever gonna be a time where you because for me, every time I go on stage, mm. it's no, the fear is the fear is always there, and there's very rare moments where it wouldn't be. You know, sometimes you can be in pure state and you're like completely confident. But a lot of people, especially performers, have said that when that fear is in there, you actually perform less. Because that fear is not just fear; it's excitement, yeah, really. You know, exactly. because you're afraid because yeah. your body is trying to get ready to do something yeah. stressful. Yeah. So. Um, the cortisol, the, the, the heart pumping, it's actually all there to serve you. There's actually a great um, you, um, TEDx, TED talk I saw. I don't remember the name of the lady, but it was about making fear your friend. Mm -hmm. um, and she talks about the way the blood vessels constrict and the way different things happen. It's like when you lean into it, um, it actually drives your performance. So it gives you more energy, it gives you more verve. Um, so it's something to manage and not to maybe take out completely but not to ever let it paralyze you so use it you know and actually i put that up on whatsapp and I had, that's uh, one of my previous blog posts was what if you reinterpreted the feeling of fear as a feeling of excitement so instead of getting psyched out like oh my heart is beating and i'm sweating be like i'm so ready i'm so excited yeah. and then you actually <laughs> just yeah and then you yeah. go in with it that's a much more powerful way of of tackling that, I think. All right. So, um, lastly, yes. right, um, coming back to branding, yeah. right, and technology, and I th there is there is doing the design, right? Yeah. But one thing I've learned about the best designers, which yes. is you guys, yeah, and yeah. you, yeah, all your products are Apple. Yeah. And Apple is not fifteen thousand rand. Right? No, it's not. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm That's a startup. your laptop last year. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 your phone, yeah. everything. So, yeah. as a startup, how is how is my technology important to my brand? Well, I've been designing for a long time, mm -hmm. and when I was designing in my dorm room many years ago, it was with a random Windows machine, mm -hmm. maybe three gig RAM, and it was the best I could get my hands on at the time. And it's not about the car; it's about the driver. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about the tools, it's about the artist. So a really good and competent artist will make something out of anything. Mm -hmm. I was watching um, Basquiat's um, documentary a while ago. So Basquiat, uh, you know Basquiat? He's a no, famous no. um, African-American um, artist from like the 80s, okay. early 90s, I think. Um, he passed away at 27, but his work is extremely um, influential. I mean, he sells for millions around the world. Jay-Z's and all reference, you know, Basquiat. His work is very, very provocative. I love it. Um, but he started off as a, as a, as like a starving artist, you know, mm -hmm. kid scrounging for change and food, but he loved to paint. He would take abandoned doors back home and paint on the doors. Like, he couldn't buy a canvas, you know. Mm -hmm. He would do whatever he can. So, um, always, like, use what you can with where you are, but as soon as you can upgrade your tools, do that yeah. too, because the tools do help quality of what you're going to bring out at the end of the day mm -hmm. um i'm an apple, apple fine boy so you know, he we work with apple um it's it's generally better some people hate apple too mm -hmm. you know so yeah. it's your preference is what you want to work with mm -hmm. so the tools are important but the, the skill is even more important mm -hmm. but invest in both
So yeah. wow, yeah. investing both. Yeah. So the skill is just as important as the tool, but the, tool is, the skill is more important. The skill is more yeah. important. Okay. Yeah. So the skill is more important than the tool. But yeah. Invest in both. Invest in both. Right. Yeah. So, what would you love to tell the viewers and anyone who enjoyed and who really found value in this interview? Um, well, read my blog. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> check out my blog. I think it'll probably be in the show notes of this episode. Mm-hmm. Something, yeah. yeah. Um, but ottoabasi, basi.com. Um, if I would say anything to you guys out there, yeah, my whichever one, my 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 big passion is in people reaching their potential. That's that's what I do with my writing and, and everything. That's what I do with my design. Also, is trying to help people be all they can be. So I would say, like, believe in yourself. I, I believe that God puts something in every human being that is that is unique and that's like your cry that's that's the passion that's the thing that you can't help but do that's why we're doing this that's why you started this and it's very important that you embrace that because if if everybody brought their gifts to the world the world would be such an amazing place i think the tragedy of 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 most humans and most continents and most people it's not the loss of resources it's the loss of the human potential of the people so like like if you love something do it do it to the best of your ability try to be the best in it and do it for the love and for the people who are going to receive it and only good things will come to you from there um be strong sure wow. <laughs> for everyone in the room and yeah. everyone who will be watching yeah, this yeah like uh, for everybody who's should, in the room you know <laughs> like throughout it's it's so worth it it's like we really appreciate it and yeah. we wish you nothing but the best thanks we hope you even get clients from this you know? i look forward to it and even doing more of these i've always wanted to do video um and so this was a very very cool experience for me to do this with you so thanks for thinking of me and having me also right. so this guy guys he's long-term success so if you're looking for long-term success then still early guys still early. <laughs> going <laughs> far <laughs> still for you. so thank you so much